Good evening, everybody. Thank you very, very much for showing up. Um, I'm Chris Mason. I'm the city's uh, energy and sustainability officer, and uh, I'm working with the city on energy issues, sustainability issues, primarily around energy, uh, for six years now. Uh, and it's time to get some more citizen input. That's uh, what this opportunity is. I want to kick off tonight. Uh, Mayor Narquist was not able to be here. He's in Boston today. He's very supportive of this program, and he left me a note to read. So I'm going to start off by reading uh, something that uh, Mayor Narquist gave us. He says, and this is addressed to you folks, uh, to my Northampton neighbors, as many of you already know, our city has been a leader in clean energy for decades and has been increasingly active in this area since Northampton adopted the 2008 Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan. And I'm jumping my own self here. I understand that was done with a lot of community input as well. Um, so this includes significant reductions of energy use and expansion of solar power in our city and school facilities, partnering with our utilities to help our business community access funds for energy efficiency improvements, and running what is turning out to be a highly successful solarized Northampton program that has already enabled many residents and businesses to sign up for their own solar electric power system. He continues, I see this clean energy strategies program, the reason you are all here tonight, as an opportunity to further our collective leadership and seek out new clean energy options for Northampton. I appreciate the opportunity provided by the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center and the Department of Energy Resources to take part in this important program and look forward to working with our state partners to identify resources that can support our ongoing efforts. I believe that public resourcefulness is crucial to finding new and innovative ways to improve energy efficiency and renewable energy generation for all sectors of our community. Your engaged participation in this process will ensure that the clean energy roadmap that we collectively develop through this process is robust and actionable. Thank you all for your participation and continuing efforts on this issue, and I look forward to the final results, results of this important process. Sincerely, Mayor David J. Narquist. Um, uh, and like I said, uh, uh, the mayor uh, is very supportive. He's been at uh, pre-meetings pre for this, and um, I'm sure he'll be at the Community Energy 201. Um, I want to recognize a few other folks from the community who've been helping out. We have a working group of 15 residents. Um, or 15 members that were chosen because they provide us with connections into certain parts of the community. They provide us with connections uh, to the faith community, to energy contractors and efficiency advocates, to low-income residents, to seniors, to emergency planning and medical community, uh, Smith College, to the business community, to realtors, uh, the economic development, the city planning, and to our rural neighborhoods. Um, so we really were trying to get connections here. We want information going in and out from all sectors of, of Northampton. And if we've missed a sector, let us know. Maybe we can uh, find ways of communicating to someone that we missed. Um, uh, so a number of the working group members are here tonight. Uh, if you guys, instead of going through a, a list of mentioning everybody, why don't you stand and people can recognize who's here. Okay. So if you know any of these folks, you can uh, make sure to talk to them and communicate with them. And there's uh, others as well. There was a handout um, given that doesn't list all of them. Uh, and actually, we're going to be adding a new one. Uh, so oh, actually, we're going to be bringing on board Marianne Labarge as well. So. Um, Mark Siegel, are you here? Mark, you are here. Mark Siegel. And Liz Salucci. There we go. OK. Okay, I want to mention, particularly Mark and Liz, uh, the city has worked with our utilities. Liz with Columbia Gas, Mark is with National Grid. Uh, we've worked with our utilities um, in getting programs going to help our businesses. And uh, I am just thrilled that they are here to join us here, what we have to say, uh, so we can collaborate with the utilities in getting things moving forward. Uh, so we want to make sure you know they were here. Um, and last, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Tyler Studs, Program Manager for the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, who's uh, really the, the, the organization that's helping this program make this program possible. Chris? Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, it's really great to see uh, 
such a great turnout. Uh, on behalf of Mass CC and DOER, I want to welcome everybody here. Um, I want to first introduce uh, my colleague, Rachel Ackerman, who has uh, worked very hard on this program. Rachel, where are you? Back there. And also Jim Barry, who is the Western Mass Regional Coordinator for the Department of Energy Resources. Um, Jim is a great resource and altogether a great person. If you don't know him, please uh, reach out to me if you have him. Um, so, first of all, um, thank you. Just, uh, so I just want to introduce um, who we are and why we're uh, doing what we're doing. So, um, as many of you may know, the Department of Energy Resources is, uh, serves as the state's uh, lead point for all energy matters. Um, in particular, they administer the Green Communities Program, um, which, uh, as you may know, Northampton was one of the first green communities in the state. Um, so, uh, they're a phenomenal resource and they're doing great things. Um, we at the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center have partnered with DOER um, a lot over the last five years since we were created uh, as a quasi public agency uh, tasked with growing clean energy in Massachusetts. And we do that uh, through a lot of different uh, projects, uh, creating jobs, cultivating <laughs> innovation in the marketplace. Um, we are investing in new technologies, and in particular, we are supporting uh, market-scale renewable energy technologies. Many of you are familiar with our programs which support um, wind, solar, solar hot water. You're not really out on the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so yes, so we've had a lot of success in the last five years, and we've met some challenges as well. And that brings us to this uh, forum here, which is an opportunity to take some of the things that we've learned, uh, including um, how direct partnerships with the community through Solarized Mass can be used to effectively uh, open up our uh, ears, hear from the community what the goals are, what your interests are, and how best we can uh, support those with different resources, with uh, technical resources. So we created a forum to listen. We've provided uh, some technical resources, such as uh, Meister Consultants Group, who's done a phenomenal job of managing um, everything from meetings to high-level strategy. And we provided some technical consultants as well um, to help assist the communities to conduct an inventory of potential projects. And so in that we are in that forum, we're trying to really understand where those potential projects and where your local community goals intersect and help to drive those forward as best as possible. And so that's our goal here. And I want to just set this table a little bit for the remainder of the portion by just talking about you know, why are we interested in clean energy? What's important about clean energy? Um, simply put, um, you know, we're interested in um, a variety of Essentially, it's sustainability. We want to understand you know, how can we uh, create a stable, clean, cost effective energy supply um, for the future that allows Northampton um, to really meet its needs to continue to be what Northampton is. And so, um, so, when we talk about clean energy, we mean uh, really a set of resources. We're talking about um, wind, sun, biomass. We're also talking about a set of strategies as well. This how we actually create and consume electricity. So in the sum total here, we look at clean energy as how we use and produce energy and how we can make decisions that help Northampton and all of our other communities become sustainable uh, in the future. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Neil, who's going to take us through the remainder of the program. And uh, thank you again for everybody uh, joining. And we just really look forward to continuing our work today. Well, I take it out we have someone who's trying to jump the car, and the car, uh, a handicap car with license 18AS, um, is in a perfectly fine spot, only they're blocking the person from being able to get to the other car and jump it. So I'm hoping that's someone me. Can... That's me. Very good. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Neil Payne. I'm with Meister Consultants I have the pleasure of being your MC tonight, uh, and all of my colleagues uh, from Meister who will help uh, facilitate uh, through the evening. Um, one quick uh, housekeeping note uh, I wanted to mention uh, North Street Association is uh, videoing the events tonight. 
Um, so if you'd like to see yourself uh, online, you can do so at YouTube. Uh, just look up the North uh, Street Association and the Northampton. And then, uh, so all these things. Um, looking ahead, uh, for the evening, uh, I will just give you a very brief introduction as to the overall community energy strategies process. Um, and then we will listen briefly to some of the inputs uh, from three working group members. Um, and then we'll break up into small discussion groups. Um, and you'll see these facilitation boards uh, around the room. Uh, we'll break up into four groups. Uh, and uh, where my colleagues will lead through discussion. We'll learn a little bit more about the projects, uh, the goals, and the ideas uh, that you have for uh, developing clean energy in North America. So, for the process, the North Hampton Community Energy Strategies process, it's really broken down into three important pieces. <coughs> the first is to uh, engage stakeholders. Um, so the city of Northampton has reached out to uh, working group members, as Chris mentioned, um, who are driving outreach for this process. Uh, and uh, as you have questions um, tonight or in the future, or ideas about the types of projects that Northampton should develop, uh, definitely reach out to those working group members. Uh, so sort of you are the, the linchpin in making this successful. Um, so in addition to tonight's forum, uh, please do uh, continue communicating with them. And, uh, together to build a strong energy roadmap. Uh, the second major piece is to identify goals and opportunities, and that's really the focus of tonight's uh, discussion. Uh, what are the types of projects that make sense for, for Northampton? Is it wind? Is it solar? Is it biomass? Um, is it energy efficiency? Is it a mix of all of the above? Is it something entirely different? Um, at the same time, what are important values uh, that we should keep in mind uh, for the community as uh, various projects or strategies unfold. Um, what is important to Northampton uh, for energy development? Um, we'd love to learn more from you tonight. And the third piece is a, is a technical analysis to assess the resources that are available. Um, and so uh, Mass CC is working with the city of Northampton as well as uh, GIS technical consultants to map um, potential sites that could be used for development in the city. Um, what are large-scale sites for solar PV, say? Or is there, uh, are there viable sites for anaerobic digestion? Um, what's the potential for uh, rooftop solar or for uh, new high-efficiency HVAC technologies um, like air source pumps or ground source pumps that can be integrated into buildings? And so we really can provide a technical component that together married with your ideas and your vision I can lead to a, a very strong and uh, actionable roadmap uh, that can make a difference uh, I think for, for clean energy development in the um, So that's the structure of the process uh, of the overall program. And I uh, really do look forward to, to working with you uh, to, to uh, <coughs> show this in the future. Um, so without further delay, I'd like to invite uh, three working group members up to join me right here. Uh, so please, Aiden, uh, and Jay, and uh, Rich, join us. And uh, they can provide a little bit of insight as to some of the things that uh, the working group has been considering so far. Um, that might provide an interesting starting point uh, for all of us tonight when we break into small discussion groups. Um, so to get us started, uh, perhaps um, you could each just introduce yourself briefly and uh, articulate why you agreed to join the Clean Energy Working Group. Great. My name is MJ Adams. Um, I'll take the microphone first because my mother says she married a guy whose last name started with A because her last name started with S and she was always at the end of the row. So, <laughs> always go first. Uh, my name is MJ Adams. I'm a Northampton uh, Board and Bread resident. Uh, I live in the Bay State Village neighborhood, which is Ward 5. Uh, I uh, sit on the Board of Public Works. And over the years, I've been involved in a number of things. I was actually participated in uh, the groups that developed the Sustainable Northampton plan. I think Northampton's got a great place to be and a great reputation. And 
when I was approached and asked to sit on this, they said, well, what community connections do you have? And I said, well, I'm on the Board of Public Works and we are constantly talking about energy and how it impacts the operations of the Board of Public Works. I just recently finished uh, a gig working for the uh, Habitat for Humanity. So energy was always foremost on our minds as we were working to build homes in partnership with families who didn't have a lot of money and we had to be mindful of that. Um, the other thing I, I wear a hat in is I'm the treasurer for the First Churches in Northampton and we just did this major renovation to replace our roof and as we were doing that, we saw our heating, we were able to insulate the sanctuary for the first time and it made a tremendous impact in how much money was going out the door. So there's a whole variety of things. And for, most critically to me, this is a really uh, an economic development issue, an, an issue of what will our country look like in the future. And if we as citizens, as individuals, don't step up and start behaving differently and voting with our pocketbook and our actions, then we're going to be that frog that boils in the boiling pot as climate change overwhelms us. And I, I think it's important to, to do something now so that my, my four daughters, my four daughters and their children will have a wonderful place to continue to live in in an economy that's robust and, and secure because we, saw, we all saw with the uh, Halloween snowstorm a couple of years ago that when the power goes out, a lot of the other part of life's activities go down too, and it was a challenge at times, so that's why I'm here. My name is Rich Horton, uh, also a North Gibson resident, like well, I've had one phone number my whole life, so uh, uh, well, really one <laughs> <laughs> um, And so uh, my connection to the, the working group really came through working with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Um, I work for a company called Community Enterprises, and we're a very active mm -hmm. member of the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm on the Economic Development Committee. Uh, a subcommittee was formed a couple of years ago, which is called the, it was the Green Committee. And basically, we were looking at ways to try to find a certification process for uh, small businesses in town to be able to uh, kind of put that sticker on the door that says, we're a certified green business. And um, if you think through that for a moment, there's you know, thousands of ways you can go with that process. <coughs> it has to get to a lot of them. There's a handful of folks in the room who are part of kind of trying to trudge through that and figure it out. And so um, along the way, the group of folks that were working together really came up with a lot of different ideas and a lot of different ways to try to just you know, move the needle a little bit. You know, it's, it's kind of um, interesting that you know, there's certainly folks, I'm sure, in this room who are, who are very passionate about this, and there's folks who are probably just curious about how do they get involved and how do they help out, and I probably will fall more of that, that vein of uh, trying to figure out how we, how we help to move the needle a little bit, how do we help businesses figure it out, and, them to make the right decisions and ways, ways to spend the money and find energy efficiencies and really from, you know, how do we help them connect to the right programs and utility and, um, support to make those changes and make the right decisions for the time. Um, so that's my connection here. I'm really excited. It's been a great working group and uh, very much appreciate your attendance and uh, input to my speech. Um, <clears throat> my name is Aiden Maynard and I'm, I'm on the Energy Commission. I was Chris Mason and some other folks uh, here. And um, I work in this field
glad we had a diversity. I'm interested to know as you discussed some of these issues um, with the working group as a whole, have there been um, two or three or four issues in particular that have risen to the top as, as uh, the most important um, to keep in mind as we move forward with uh, the green energy program? Yeah, I can, I can start kind of echoing what MJ said about housing. I think that was something that came up um, in our initial discussions that, um, like what I just said, kind of. Uh, Restating it, um, you know, energy affects the cost of living, and, and affordable housing and quality housing. So we're not just talking about uh, low cost, but comfortable and healthy. Um, I think that's a major issue, and um, you know, in any economy, um, also, you know, no business wants to move into a building where their energy costs are going to be half of their rent. So I think that also came up. I think one of the things I noticed um, through the process, at least the initial discussions, is that. There's so many varied perspectives around this, and, and there's no one right one right way to do it. And so I think part of the um, challenge for all of us is, is figuring out how do we you know, find a common path that makes the most uh, sense for you know, most people to be able to, to hop on. And I think um, you know, the, the deeper we got into the discussion, the more varied the outcomes were. And so that, to me, I think is um, you know, not necessarily an outcome, but at least you know, initial. <laughs> outcome of the discussion so far is that, wow, there's a lot of areas to go and we need to kind of figure out what's the right, right direction to start on. And the one thing I really appreciated was the sense that the different scale you could do it at. Do we, do, do we work at the city level or do we break it down? We've got some great neighborhood associations, some real strong sort of sense of identity in the different villages and one size will not fit all, but there's a real opportunity to sort of take a look at different scales, you know, at the city level, at the neighborhood level, and then, of course, at the individual homestead level. So I thought that that was a really interesting opportunity to see where we can make this apply in a, a scale that's workable and that we feel like we can have some impact. Um, also, uh, we talked a lot about existing programs. You know, it's a, a broad term, but many of you may have heard of the Mass Aid Program, the Utility Funded Energy Efficiency Programs. We live in a state with the most spending per capita for energy efficiency, and uh, it's quite an impressive uh, bundle of money. And uh, my concern working with those programs a lot, and echoing other people who work in the business um, program that we created in town while leading the way, is that those programs aren't as accessible and uh, streamlined as they should be. And um, my, this is a little my, my own personal perspective here, but I think it will take a, a community's effort and insistence that those programs improve and become more engaging on the local level and kind of, uh, no offense, uh, de uh, the utility programs. <laughs> um, sort of following on that, Marco, I, I think that's an interesting perspective and um, would also like to learn more about what's been successful so far in the community. Um, for example, Chris shared earlier with me some of the solar rise efforts that have been going on. Um, I understand there have also been some energy efficiency initiatives. But uh, do you see other initiatives or programs that are already happening in Northampton that provide a nice launching point uh, for continued development? Uh, one of the programs that um, developed shortly after our Green Committee um, sort of took a break, if you will, was um, the concierge program that was put in place. Uh, CET worked with utility companies to really find a way to help um, help the business owners get it done. And so uh, a quick example of that is as our, our Green Committee had finally discovered which certification program we wanted to roll out, we started to have meetings with some of the local businesses to say, come on in and let's talk about this. And honestly, it was hard to even get the business owners once he spent 30 seconds telling them what was involved, you know, right away that he ends up, I just don't have time, I don't have the energy, I don't have the staff, I don't have, you know, they want to do it, but they just couldn't feasibly you know, step into the, to the mix, or you know, catch me the next time you the next time you come around. And so, what was really great about the concierge program and continues to be great is that it does aid in the process for the business owner. And so, one of the business owners I was begging to come to one of our meetings and just wouldn't very politely, but said, "No, I can't do it." Um, front page newspaper article a year later, and it spent you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars putting huge amounts of energy savings into their business. And I went, ah, you know, 
kind of guide them down the path and tell them what to check to write and what it's worth and why they should do it, and they're willing to do it. But it's just it's kind of trying to find that balance between uh, a program that really requires a lot of work versus a program that's really sort of all-encompassing that they can just sort of say, yes, let's do it and move forward. And I think that that needle definitely has moved. There certainly is a lot more opportunity to continue to, to push it. Um, I can, I can please chime in there. Um, uh, you may have heard of the ESCO uh, program that we did energy service contracts. So the city, uh, with Chris Nielsen's leadership, kind of uh, contracted with the energy service company and they did a lot of low hanging fruit improvements to city buildings. Ended up saving like 25% of energy, 20% of the numbers. Uh, but it was great. Um, but what the city did next is they went the next step and got a grant, a communities grant, I think, to get some of the deeper savings needed in the building. Um, and that's just fantastic and work with local contractors to get that done. Um, so it's just a great um, example of um, going, you know, doing what's easy and most cost effective and then going to the next step and getting that grant money, which again, we have access to. Um, so that's a great uh, success story. Um, and then of course, 106 uh, kilowatts on Smith Boat's roof that gives us money into a special fund for uh, projects related to our work here um, year after year. That's great. Following up on the Smith, uh, Smith Boat comment, uh, when Habitat decided to build houses on land that the city had given Habitat, we actually wanted to make sure that it wasn't just building homes, uh, but it was also a partnership that we have with Smith Vocational High School Construction Trades Program. And so the students helped Habitat build the homes, and we made the decision that this was going to be a good learning experience for them, one that had long-term consequences for the family, so we worked at making the homes LEED certified. We, uh, they were designed so that they were lead, eligible for LEED certification. And the students worked side by side with the Habitat volunteers to try to sort out what all that stuff meant. So it was not just an educational program for the students and for the Habitat volunteers, but for the volunteers who came and worked on a regular basis. At the same time, Northampton had just implemented the stretch code. And then um, the other thing that we started to create an awareness of is, you know, if you build, uh, you know, a, a 2,500 square foot house, it inherently gonna, it could very well inherently consume more energy. So if you build a more modest sized house, a habitat sized house, um, that that in and of itself is taking less energy and also less embedded uh, energy to create the materials to build in the long run. So we felt like the, the work that habitat was doing was not just around housing, but it was really around energy efficiency and long term sustainability and energy responsibility because the energy cost for the low-income families can be a really big part of their housing costs. Uh, um, the issue of the stretch code is going to chime in there because I work daily with builders and architects uh, who are trying to meet stretch code requirements and I think it's a really great thing. I've been doing it for uh, the past six months and um, it just, it's effect, it's changing the mentality and the design of homes in a good way. You know, there's no more uh, room for a leaky ductwork. There's no reason why anyone should be installing leaky ductwork inside homes unless they're just trying to do, get the most profit off the project. So the people who win from the stretch code are you, the consumers, um, and the builders who are taking a step ahead. And a lot of them are learning, they're very humble and are learning a lot. Um, so I just want to put that out there. There's probably still some controversy around it, but um, from the trenches I see it's a really great thing. So the number of clear successes are already uh, under uh, development here. Yeah. Um, when you look ahead, uh, uh, are there specific requirements that you think um, we need to take into account for any future uh, green energy development? Um, for, uh, in a broader sense, how does clean energy relate to the values of the community? Are there specific values or requirements that you would expect or you've discussed among the board group as important? I think that um, the sense that I've gotten is, is that we are very much committed and it's a very high value to citizens in Northampton that we maximize as much as we can the clean energy. But we also know that even though we develop all the solar and we look at uh, hydropower and wind power as sources, we're still going to have to deal with the reality that we are electric and coal based, carbon based. And how do we then switch our behavior, try to, to make the energy efficiency as high as it can? and educate folks about the different choices that we do make when we use carbon-based fuel. And I think that that clean energy, that switch, how can we, 
we'll switch somewhat to the, the alternative things that don't emit carbon, but how can we make sure that over the long run, even if we are still using carbon-based fuels, how do we make sure that we're using them as efficiently as we can? And this whole big community education, I think there's a great opportunity to look at the switch that's happening between oil and gas and what happens with gas. And, and nothing's ever as easy and straightforward as you think it's going to be. But what are the environmental consequences that come with it with all our choices that we make? Are the other um, Chris Mason and I met yesterday in one of the um, interesting parts of the conversation we had was around marketing and how it, how it comes into the clean energy discussion. And so um, it's interesting because, you know, everybody sort of moves at their own pace. And so some folks are leading edge folks and do it because they build their lives around this is important to me. And then other folks will do it eventually when either there's, you know, some big catastrophic event that causes them to make the change or enough neighbors convince them, or you know the price is right, or whatever. And so I think um, part of what we need to keep in mind as we go forward is how do we continue to you know get people interested in it, and continue to get people to be making the right decisions at the right time to, to move forward. And um, you know even one of the the points that came up in the, the working group meeting last time is you know at, at the point that you need a new furnace in your house isn't always the ideal time that you're going to be making those decisions about the energy efficiency of the furnace. You know, mine went out two days before Christmas. At that point, it's, you know, it's get the heat back on. So, you know, it's less about trying to pick the right system. It's about getting the system in that works. So, um, but even in that discussion, how do we get the contractors to make sure that they're thinking about these things and kind of falling in line with the plans of the uh, green energy program? You know, how do we get them to be encouraging folks to make those decisions? Because they're, they're at that point of sale. I would encourage them to do the right thing. Last question for you, bro. So, uh, from thinking about the discussions that will be going on tonight, what's your hope for the reform and the outcomes uh, as uh, it moves into the development of the community? Some thoughts I had, I think, um, you know, it, it's about finding a shared perspective. You know, there are so many different viewpoints on how this should should flow out. It's how do we get to, to that common path. Um, to reassess what's working, you know, which of these energy efficiency programs and assessments are working well, what can we do to make them better, um, what doesn't work, and let's, you know, either you know, change it or stop doing it. Um, and then I think really it's the continuation of the dialogue and, you know, transforming that to a new action plan that we can all embrace and, and move forward. I think that one of the things we need to look at is what assets does the city as a whole bring to the table in sort of Forming what we as a community want to have as our energy future. I think that one of the things I felt pretty profoundly about, it seemed like it was madness that right after the Halloween snowstorm, which I was out of power for five days, um, that the number of people who ran out and got their own little private generator. And I was, you know, it seems to be like there, there needs to be a better way to respond to that energy security thing. There were people who were driving around in their cars so they could charge up their cell phones. It just there was a lot of odd behavior because we were out of energy, and I think that, that my hope is is that we find better ways to respond to these things, that we build long-term energy security, that the energy that we do try to develop is as clean as possible, and that we take a look at the community's assets. I'll share with you that there's been a little discussion in the board of public works arena about what about aerobic anaerobic digesters, and so we're starting to learn a little bit of the technology. No, there's not any one plan. We just been talking about it. Just let me go to one to the clear it was raised, and we looked at it a little. But the question is, if these things are going to be cited, if these alternative energy um, facilities are going to be cited, where should they be? What impacts will they have on the neighborhood and on the community? And how do we responsibly balance the pros and cons of that? No, one thing I'm hoping for is excitement. Enthusiasm uh, from you folks. You know, there's a lot of creative ideas out there um, that are being tried, like uh, energy efficiency financing, and they're really exciting. And you know, we don't have a tool right now, anything like that. But uh, with people's ideas and our commitment to this process, we can create something like that. Um, and I'm just really simply one thing I'm hoping out of this is just a clear action plan. And I love planning process. I love talking and discussing. But I want to see um, all these ideas get, you know jumbled up by our professional consultants here and are coming out with us, uh, the forum members, um, informing an action plan so we can move ahead. That's of course our vision, you know, what kind of place do we want to live in, um, supporting each other.
each other, having one houses, making sure the development, you know, what are the zoning changes that you know, single family houses are turning to three family houses, are they done right? And are they gonna be healthy, quality uh, living units? That sounds good. I, I really look forward to working with all of you, and I think that's true for uh, uh, my colleagues as well, and uh, look forward to hearing more from all of you as well. Uh, please join me in giving a round of applause to our panelists. Uh,
up with some ideas and figure out what we as a group think are some of the best ones, and then we'll present it uh, to the, the wider group uh, at the end of this meeting. So, any questions on that? Great. So, um, who wants to start? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, now that the landfill is closed permanently on the front door, I'm into solar. And we are now losing money and not generating any money. I am very interested in solar. So, solar on the landfill. Great. That's a. Uh, it's a really popular option, and we've seen, as you mentioned, we've seen a lot of uh, Massachusetts municipalities go after that, and they're saving a lot of money. So, uh, it sounds like that's actually a really great near-term goal that maybe can be done in the next couple of years. So, put that up as our first idea. Imagine that 20 years So, actually, we're doing it already. We're already doing it. We're already doing it. Okay. Okay. Check. Yeah. Right. Electricity. Okay. Excellent. So, right. Right. Yep. Community composting. Yeah. Citywide composting. Citywide composting. Citywide composting. composting. That's great. So, one of the things that's coming down the pike is going to be a waste ban uh, in the state for very large um, um, uh, biomass um, distributors. So, um, so that, that's actually an idea that I think um, really is going to be, again, um, short term, because uh, there's going to be a lot of demand for alternative ways to dispose of the waste. So that's great. We put it up over here. Okay, we'll get a waste what? A waste ban. So folks who are producing tons and tons and tons of organic waste, like um, shopping centers, uh, very large restaurants, cafeterias, so they're not going to be able to just throw that in the trash anymore. They're going to have to find another way to get rid of it. So it doesn't end up in the plant. Yeah, hey, hoverboards. 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 Perfect. So, transportation. Got it. 25 Hoverboards. Go ahead, Aiden. I'll leave it to you to do it. I forget what the technology is, but it's on the way. Why is that helpful? It takes energy to uh, lift something you also drop. Fine. Um, anyway, but I know a real one too. Um, there are no bad ideas, so the right still have fun. Yeah, it's just fun. Sorry, you saw the bug on the no residential unit. Uh, that
Uh, so that was in the sense of both local ownership uh, as well as working with local industries and farmers were uh, an economic sector uh, that was strongly emphasized as, uh, as huge potential. Um, and the last was a uh, big theme was uh, emphasizing both long-term and near-term initiatives. Uh, so projects that can have uh, quick wins uh, for Northampton and sort of set them on the, the long-term path, uh, as well as sort of projects that, that take longer. Um, and so that played out in a couple of different ways, looking at energy efficiency as a near-term uh, initiative um, uh, that should, uh, according to our group, be prioritized. Um, looking at innovative funding mechanism to support the local theme. Uh, looking at public transportation as interpreted both as sort of a near-term and a long-term initiative. Um, very strong emphasis on distributed generation, uh, which could encourage local ownership uh, by residents. Uh, and, um, and looking at things like uh, community solar or solar canopies using uh, resources like parking lots to build uh, more solar. Um, and then education was seen as uh, a major piece that sort of fits into um, a number of these big things, local, comfortable, equality. And uh, I think folks just point out that sometimes doing energy efficiency projects or clean energy projects is just too darn hard, right? So how can we make it easier, uh, streamline the process, also educate people about what needs to get done? Um, there's a, that's sort of a big emphasis. Um, the last one I just want to mention was anaerobic digestion that fit into a number of those things in a number of ways. Um, from supporting our local farmers uh, to integrating other uh, uh, sectors like uh, waste management uh, as well. Um, so that was a major thing from our group, uh, and uh, maybe I'll pass over to John Craig and Jerry Hines. Thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, we had a lot of interesting discussions on a, a range of topics, and uh, I won't be able to mention them all, but uh, one issue that we talked a lot about was, was waste, um, increasing uh, curbside pickup of, of composting, recycling. Uh, overall waste production, and perhaps maybe within the next 10 years, we just waste by 90%. Uh, was a goal that was thrown out. Um, and also the issue of, of creating incentives. Um, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of discussion about the need for financial incentives, recognizing that that plays a major role in people's decisions, and it's a major barrier at the moment, uh, but also recognizing that there are other incentives, such as social responsibility um, and, and sort of community pressure to do the right thing, and uh, recognizing the impacts uh, that we have. Um, education and behavior change was, was a major focus, and a lot of things we, we talked about touched on that. Um, ideas such as uh, home energy scorecards as, as a way to educate people on a particular home's uh, energy value. Um, creating, uh, creating social norms uh, to make sure that energy efficiency is something that's ingrained in, in the community and, and values. Uh, and part of that is to tell stories, uh, to make sure that those who are having success in their home are doing innovative you know, things and those stories are getting out there. We talked a little bit about, you know, could the, the city create more testimonials on the web page, could uh, those stories be told in the Gazette, uh, and, and other ways of, of getting those, uh, well, building the social norms, but also getting information out there. Uh, one idea that was mentioned was a network of people to help, maybe an energy mentors program, but people who have been through the process already to help those who are starting out and have lots of questions, um, and that would be a person who doesn't have a financial incentive, uh, isn't selling a product, isn't associated with a particular company, who just can be provided one. Uh, in terms of goals and targets, uh, a couple of possible targets that were thrown out were um, reducing fossil fuel use by 50%, uh, reducing emissions by 80% was also mentioned, um, uh, getting a certain percentage of community members and businesses to do energy audits, uh, sometimes there's a resistance to that both, uh, for cost and time reasons. And we talked a bit about transportation and making sure that public transit uh, that's available is being used and also uh, increasing the uh, renewable aspects of that transportation uh, in the future. Uh, and encouraging people to use it more as well as uh, walking and biking. And really, as Neil mentioned, uh, making sure that uh, whatever solutions we find are really accessible to all members of the community uh, and aren't just serving a particular sector. Um, and then along with our discussion about waste and recycling, uh, some of the renewable energy technologies we talked about were uh, using anaerobic digesters as a way to turn some of that compost and agricultural waste from the surrounding uh, farms into energy, uh, and also as an eco-friendly way to, uh, to get rid of the waste. So yeah, that, that's sort of um, some of the details, some of the bigger picture stuff we talked about was uh, addressing big systems, making sure that those who have a really big impact that we're addressing uh, uh, municipal impacts of um, community uh, businesses, um, and really uh, enacting structural changes uh, that, that have deep and lasting impacts. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Chad, and I'll let you guys catch.
which of the facilitators is also a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of the, the vision, we talked about looking at opportunities for more on-site generation, um, making potentially a, a micro-grid or uh, off-grid technologies available to residents of, of Northampton. So if there's a power outage or extreme weather events that uh, Northampton's electricity sort of stays on board, and how do we integrate renewables in a way that allows that to happen? Um, the key overarching focus was to make Northampton still bikeable, walkable, livable, dense communities that can share energy between buildings. If you know there's solar opportunity on your neighbor's roof, but not on yours, maybe you can put a larger system on the neighbor's roof so you can share in that as well. Um, focusing on conservation and behavior change. So how do we how do we get people to do the right thing in their homes? Um, tying in smart grid and smart metering at the household level, so maybe things run in uh, dollars instead of kilowatt hours, so driving people to uh, use less or, or use less energy um, because they're aware of how much energy they're, they're how much it's uh, costing them every day. And then building on that, we came up with a, a number of, uh, the group came up with a number of great ideas, uh, including solar zoning requirements, maybe in certain areas. There was the idea of turning King Street into Solar Alley, so making all of the parking uh, lots and, and car parks uh, canopy with solar, and then um, making that a sort of you know, just big, large solar display. There's a lot of opportunity on that on that street to sort of showcase solar and maybe how that ties into electric cars or electric vehicles. Um, providing priority parking for electric vehicles. Um, one of the goals was the vision was sort of a waste stream neutral that ties into the anaerobic digestion ideas that a lot of the other groups also talked about. Uh, so we talked about that too. Um, what else? Uh, using LED lighting and motion sensors in buildings. Uh, maybe we put some uh, some turbines in the Connecticut River, focus on uh, stream power, river power. Uh, look at the uh, opportunities for that, for anaerobic digestion, for trash to energy. How do we convert trash to energy? Are there some new technologies that can do that in a clean, uh, efficient, and effective way? Um, and also uh, wind analysis sort of on a parcel by parcel basis. So can I do a small wind turbine in my backyard? Um, where are the opportunities? Where is wind appropriate for Northampton? Where is it not appropriate? But figure, figure that out, so sort of run some of those numbers. And then, this, again, sort of the theme that overarched all of those ideas is to be very careful about uh, considering what our energy choices are and what impacts they have and make sure that we're not picking an idea that turns out to be a, a bad one uh, in the future, and of course, we don't know what what's going to happen. But have a careful process, uh, carefully consider uh, the impacts of each of the different energy opportunities and energy clean energy options. Even if they are clean, uh, they all have some sort of impact. So be careful to uh, analyze those impacts. Uh, and look for sort of quality standards and consistency in design and performance, and make sure that uh, those technologies that we adopt perform as sort of they were promised to do so. Um, and then this idea of having a sort of clearinghouse energy expert available uh, to answer questions and steer people in the right direction, because there are a lot of opportunities, um, but they're sort of each in different places, and it's difficult to know where to find what information, whether it's technology or energy efficiency, or what can I do in my own home or my business. Um, and then um, towards the end, we sort of got an overview of all the great things that Northampton has been doing. and. Most of the ideas that we covered have at least uh, been started, or there's been started that idea in Northampton, whether it's uh, building codes through the adoption of the stretch code, an LED lighting pilot, uh, there is there is priority parking in electric free vehicle plug-in um, in a couple places within Northampton already. So a lot of the ideas are sort of how can we expand on the great work that, uh, you know, Chris, his name was called out in particular, but how do we, how do, we do what Chris is doing for the city and expand that to, uh, uh, to That's the what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I think uh, I'll turn it over to Jason. Thanks, Dad. Uh, so uh, our group came up with a number of ideas, so I'll try to just uh, touch on a few of them here. Uh, there was a lot of discussion around education, um, and in particular, thinking about possibly expanding, for example, the concierge program that was brought up to homeowners and residents. Um, thinking through uh, educating uh, landlords and then having let landlords educate their tenants and thinking through some of the issues associated with um, uh, split incentives between renters and landlords. Um, on the, uh, we discussed pollution control as well too. Um, so thinking beyond just um, uh, energy pollution, 
pollution, but maybe light pollution, sound pollution. Uh, there was a lot of discussion around um, open space and how we manage our open spaces and uh, you know whether or not we should be, for example, um, mowing lawns as much as we do or, uh, or, or whether the city should be constantly mowing um, areas that, uh, that people don't generally use as much. Um, some discussion around renewable energy, uh, thinking about uh, anaerobic digester uh, at the wastewater treatment plant and whether there's an opportunity to generate energy there as well as the landfill. Um, also looking at some of the low head hydro dams um, available uh, that are already existing within the city, uh, and whether or not there's an opportunity to generate electricity there. Um, let's see what else did we cover here. Uh, some of the transportation issues. Um, so walkability, um, improving uh, services and communities and making them as walkable as possible, uh, improving the amount of public transportation. Um, one of the ideas that was discussed was expanding the ride sharing program that's available in Boston out to Western Massachusetts, um, and uh, thinking about um, improving pedestrian access as well to, um, to many of the existing services here. Uh, and finally, on food uh, uh, discussion, um, we talked about improving local food infrastructure. So whether it's access to community gardens, um, reinstating a cannery, a can uh, cannery that was here before, and allowing uh, people with community gardens to actually preserve uh, food over the long term. Um, also thinking about sharing uh, local food resources. So if uh, people have community gardens, actually. Um, sharing uh, in what's produced uh, within those gardens. Um, and uh, I think that's uh, a pretty good overview. So maybe with that, I'll turn it over to Thank you. Um, I just wanted to start by thanking my group. Uh, you guys kept me on my toes, but touch literally at all bases. Uh, and uh, I think that, that shows me a flagging organization. Uh, that, that, that to me is usually a good sign that we got a lot of ideas from the table. So, um, impossible to summarize, but um, some of the things we touched on, we talked talk about waste, um, bringing a citywide composting effort, uh, banning bio non biodegradable packaging, uh, encouraging local foods, and getting rid of junk mail. Um, I, I think there's a lot in here that's, that's uh, near term, there's a lot in here that's long term, but I think it's all doable. So that's, that's a great set of ideas. Also talk some about um, the transportation, uh, things like Free public transit, things like bike sharing, it's been successful in a lot of other places. Why not here? Um, talk about some stretch goals, like bring back the trolleys. Um, maybe if something that worked before, why can't it work now? Uh, and then some real stretch goals, like hoverboards. Uh, <laughs> all of you I would like to ask Aiden about, I think he's got a plan, and it sounds like he might be a great investor. So, um, so that was transportation. Again, near term, long term, we're going to have some great ideas that come out of this. Uh, we talked a lot about solar. Um, people had, had uh, have seen the praises of the current solarized effort, uh, wondering, well, why can't we do um, the same thing for non nonprofits? Why can't we do the same thing for small businesses? Again, something that, that's near term that I think uh, could absolutely happen. Uh, talk about solar on the landfill. Again, something that's been really popular and can happen right here, right now. Um, passive solar houses is another thing. Uh, if we're going to get to zero net energy, people need to be smarter about how they design homes and to use solar. Uh, things that are maybe a, a little further down the road, like human power. Um, and then uh, other you know, near-term things like uh, making sure that the hospitals are maximizing their renewable energy and converting to, to all renewable energy. Uh, and then we talk a lot about energy efficiency, a lot of great ideas in here. Uh, things like making sure that all the trades are thinking about energy efficiency. So when your roofer comes out to your home, um, why aren't they talking to you about energy efficiency? Why aren't they talking to you? about making the, the best choices. They don't, why, why are they just trying to slap a roof on your house? So maybe coming up with checklists so every time you go through um, you know, and get, a, get a, you know, a new roof on your home, you gotta make sure you're, you're talking about that. Uh, more efficient, HVAC. Uh, things like LED street lights, things like all the homes uh, using geothermal by 2035. So again, a lot of stretch goals, uh, a, a lot of things that again can be done here and now. Uh, we also talked uh, a lot about um, creating a culture of energy efficiency, creating a culture of clean energy, um, which again is a long-term goal, but there's also a lot of opportunities for education. Uh, we had folks talking about the fact that, hey, they just learned about MassSafe. They just learned about this program that's been in Massachusetts for 20 years. It's given away 75% of the cost of insulation. Um, you know, why aren't more people aware of it? Why isn't it you know, 
plastered everywhere. So uh, again, a lot of near-term wins with just education. Um, in terms of long-term education, a, a great idea. Why isn't clean energy you know, a, a standard uh, in our schools? You know, just like you have your MCAS, why isn't there a module about clean energy? Uh, if you want to get to this long-term culture that we talked about, that's one pathway. So uh, again, a lot of great ideas, uh, a lot to summarize, but uh, I just want to thank uh, my group for uh, really a, a great and robust conversation. And with that, that's it. Great. Thanks so much, guys. Um, just sort of listening to this quick summary, uh, a number of highlights that I think came across multiple groups uh, that are really exciting. One being uh, the idea of the solar alley, uh, building on solar canopies uh, and the solarized program. Uh, I think that's really, really compelling. Anaerobic digestion and the role of farms, uh, waste, uh, and compost. And I think that ties into uh, a number of statements about the role of food in farms uh, in that broader sustainability and energy initiative. Um, a number of calls for a clearinghouse, an energy clearinghouse that sort of streamlines the process, uh, markets the process, and really makes energy efficiency accessible to uh, uh, local residents. Um, a number of calls for behavior change, whether that's simple things like drying the laundry on the line or mowing your lawn less. Um, but these are sort of simple uh, uh, tasks that we could perhaps explore further. Um, and then transportation. So what is the role for public transportation? in the area? Um, should the downtown be made totally walkable? Uh, should it uh, increase uh, or seek to increase biking? Um, or uh, I know in a couple of groups uh, we've heard some things about electric vehicle uh, uh, infrastructure. So what is the role of public transportation in, um, in the community and how can it be made more clean? Um, lots of uh, ideas to think about going forward. And uh, I know we look forward to working with uh, the working group uh, and Chris and all of you again uh, to explore these in greater depth. So, with that in mind, I uh, just want to remind you, uh, there will be a second forum uh, in sometime in October. The date is to be determined. Uh, we would love for all of you to participate in that again. And at that point, we'll be taking a, a much closer look at some of these ideas uh, based on input from the working group, as well as uh, suggestions from some of the technical experts um, who will be running uh, GIS analyses and looking at potential sites uh, and sort of putting that all in front of you uh, to review at a two open forum. So if you'd like to participate in that, which we hope you do, uh, don't forget to sign up on the sign-in sheet uh, so we have your email and we'll make sure you are updated accordingly uh, for that two open forum. Um, and also, uh, Tyler has asked me to remind you to please fill out your comment cards. Uh, tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like, tell us what we can do better. Um, but we really look forward to working with you again, and uh, I think you should all give yourself a round of applause for a great night of uh, work. Thank you. That's it. We'll be around if you'd like to chat. Um, in the meantime, have a great evening.